I'm Ryan Boyd. Me and my wife, Glorianne, are avid hunters and outdoorsmen. We also own a nuisance wildlife removal company. We have a deep respect for all wildlife and are passionate about conservation and helping people get out of the house or office and reconnect with our wild roots, which is how we believe God created us to live. We always have our hands full dealing with some kind of critter, so please join us and get ready. It's a wild life. All right, we're here in South Florida and we are dealing with a crazy animal. So we, you guys have seen us catch lots of green iguanas, but there's another species called the Mexican spiny-tailed iguana, and this is a totally different creature. Green iguanas, I can chase down, and after about 30 or 40 feet, they tire out very quickly. Even when you grab them, they'll go crazy for about five to 10 seconds and they get tired, like most reptiles. Short burst of energy and then they're, they're gassed. These Mexican spiny-tailed iguanas, they go and they go and they go. In fact, I chased one about 200 yards and as I thought he was about to tire down, he kicked it in the fifth gear and just took off and I couldn't keep up with him. They're extremely aggressive, they're extremely powerful, and they're just a different creature. Um, makes me really excited to try to get our hands on one. Now we've been out here to this park and we've tried a few different methods. Um, they're not as easy to get close to with the, with the catch pole like we do with the green iguanas. So I've got a few different methods that we're gonna try out. We've actually got some of this netting. This is actually a, a net that we typically use to exclude bats out of structures but it's like a thin plastic netting, like a mesh. And what I'm gonna to try to do is get between these iguanas and their hole. They have a burrow that's always nearby and they typically will shoot into that nearest hole in the ground or hole in the tree. So if I can beat them to that hole, I can cover this. And so then try to flush them into the hole. And the idea is they'll get into this net, get tangled up just enough time for me to be able to run in there and grab them and just slow them down. I do have to have gloves because these guys are wild and covered in razor blades and they're sharp on both ends. Everything about these guys is just powerful and dangerous. So let's see if we can catch one. All right, so what we've done, we've got a big iguana behind us, about 20 yards behind the camera. A few of them actually, and we're gonna come around. I think they're entering this tree. There's a few that we kind of beat to the tree and they went the other way. So we're gonna set these nets up, give it a couple minutes, calm down and then come around and try to flush the big ones into this tree. I love an animal that's hard to catch and this is absolutely a challenge. These Mexican spiny tail iguanas, they're actually more harmful to the native wildlife because they're more of an omnivore. They'll eat other lizards, they'll eat bird eggs, they'll eat birds, they'll get anything they can in their mouth. They're very fast, they're very smart, and I mean, I'm looking at Right now, I'm looking at probably 30, and we just ran about 100 into that tree. There's another couple big ones over here. We've got our net set up, we're waiting. Just let everything kind of calm down, and in a few minutes, I'm gonna try to push these iguanas to that other tree. We've got two territorial males right here that are displaying some aggression toward each other. So that means they're starting to behave like iguanas, and they're starting to calm down a little bit, so it's almost time to try to see if we can push them in the net. It worked. All right, let me get this guy under control. Right now, I do not have him under control. I'll show you just how crazy these guys are. So this is the Mexican spiny tail iguana, if you can feel the power. Okay, that entire tail is covered in spines in every direction. He bit me through my glove, and I think he might have drawn blood through my leather glove here. They have got, look at the teeth on them. You see the teeth? These guys are powerful. These guys are dangerous. These guys are amazing. Just a beautiful animal, and uh, it was cool. It was a plan that came together. So one down, about a thousand to go. <laughs> I got you good, didn't I? Yeah. Mm, that was dumb. Oh. All right, so the, these iguanas, I did not do this on purpose. These iguanas are so fast and powerful that he's got a hold of my finger. It's a pretty bad bite through my glove. So, um, Lorianne, what you're gonna need to do as soon as you stick that through, he's gonna get, he's not biting down hard right now. He's just, he's got a relaxed bite, but it's still an incredible, powerful bite. You need to stick that through. When you stick it through, push your end down. It's gonna kind of pry his mouth open enough for me to get my hands out. So stick it through right there, that opening in his mouth. 
Uh, stick it through. All right, now push your end down. Push your end or up, <laughs> down. Oh, nope, give me that. Give me that. Actually feels a lot worse than it looks. Don't mess with these Mexican spiny tail iguanas. These guys are freaking nuts. Powerful. It's amazing how powerful these guys are. Through the glove, through the leather glove. Look what he did in my glove. These guys are nuts. I gotta be super careful. Look what he did in my glove. Punched a hole through it like scissors. All right, so that iguana got me pretty good. It makes a good spiny tail, and that was with my gloves on. I don't have my first aid kit with me. We've actually used up all the antiseptic in the first. I've had a lot of bites recently. I had a raccoon scratch a few weeks ago, and just a lot of bites and scratches. I don't know if I'm slowing down or, but uh, I just, I'm gonna squirt this with some hand sanitizer. And it, it already hurts, so it, it really, it's not like the sting is, hands are already throbbing. And that was through my glove, that is a powerful, powerful animal that shows you the power of that bite that entire jaw is just nothing but power and muscle and they do carry a lot of bacteria in their saliva so if I was to leave that you know unwashed or uncleaned there's a almost a certainty of getting an inf infection so I'm just trying to clean it out as best I can and let's go catch another Got him. Little colorful one. Just a little guy. Congratulations. <laughs> hey. All right, so this is our last guy of the day. We're gonna call it quits, but we caught about four or five. We were able to outsmart because these guys are smart. <laughs> As you can see, they are mean too. They really did a number on Ryan's finger. So do not feed these guys. If you see them in the public, most likely they're gonna run away from you, but it's a, a little kid that's gonna see you trying to feed it, try to do the same thing, and then he is gonna try to take a bite of that little kid's finger. So please do not do that. But um, they're just so wild, you can't tame them. So we've actually talked to pet stores and they said they're useless to them because there's no way to make these tamed for a pet. So we do have people that like to eat them. So we're gonna use the meat and then you can see how gorgeous the skin is. We're gonna make some awesome wallets out of it. So at least these guys will not go to waste. So we're doing a good thing, trying to remove some invasive species and then also using their hide, their meat. And you know, it's just a, such a cool animal. All right, it is a hot sunny day here in Florida. We're back in Northeast Florida and it is uh, February and it feels like about June, but we've got these Mexican spiny tails. I don't even want to call them iguanas because they are a totally different animal. They look different, they act different, they're way smarter, they eat different things. So the green iguanas are mostly herbivores and the Mexican spiny tails, they will eat pretty much anything that they can get their mouth on. They'll eat small mammals, they'll eat uh, eggs, insects, other lizards, and they will eat some uh, vegetation as well, but they, they are opportunistic. So they eat pretty much anything they can get their mouth on, um, which is very harmful for our native wildlife. I love these animals. These, these guys are absolutely fascinating. They're powerful, they're beautiful, they're incredible. They're hard to catch, which I love any animal that presents a challenge. And um, if it was up to me, I would find homes or relocate all these guys, every single one of them, but it's just not realistic. They're very harmful for our native wildlife. We can't relocate them, you can't tame them down, they're just way too wild. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna dispatch these animals and I'm gonna show you how we do that. Um, YouTube's a little sensitive to uh, a lot of things, a lot of components of reality, so I'm going to um, not do it on camera, but I am gonna show you how we do it because a lot of people ask. So the hard part's gonna be how we're gonna get these guys out of here without getting, getting bit. So let's go ahead and try this. I'm gonna try to. Try to distract him. All right, let's see if we can distract this guy and see if I can be quick enough. Here, watch right here. I do not want to get bit again. All right. You see how incredibly fast these guys are. And they're just, everything about them is sharp. Their claws are razor sharp. Their entire tail, and I just got scratched on the forearm, but look at that tail. Come in the sun right here. Look at the tail, all the way down to the end of his tail. They have these sp spines that are coming out. And you can see I can kind of rub in that direction, but this direction, I literally cannot take my finger across that. They're razor sharp spines. 
you can see that all the way down. I want you to take a good look at inside of their mouth. That's all jaw muscle. So the power of these jaws is absolutely unmatched for a similar animal of this size. Just pretty crazy, amazing. But they're a beautiful animal, like I said. I hate killing them, I hate dispatching them, but what we do, people ask us a lot, how do you guys kill them? So they have a spot right on the back of their skull, a lot like a alligator. And what we do is we sever that spinal cord with a knife and it kills them absolutely instantly. I'm talking about half a second and they're instantly dead. Well, a lot of other trappers that catch and remove these iguanas, they will literally just shoot them, put them in a pile and they burn them. We don't like to do that. We're actually going to, uh, we talked about it and what we're gonna do since it's such a, a different animal, I'm curious and Gloriana is curious to see what they taste like. So we are gonna go ahead and try to make a recipe and cook this up and, and uh, see if it tastes similar to a green iguana. But what a beautiful animal. Super cool, like a little dinosaur. We're cleaning these iguanas. Look at all these eggs that we found inside. There's probably 30 or 40 eggs inside this one female. So you can see how quickly they can reproduce, even though there's still control efforts going on to try to remove as many iguanas as we can. There's no stopping them. They're everywhere. So do not feel bad for these iguanas. All right, we've got our spiny tail all cleaned up and chopped up here. So these are all the spiny tail legs. So it looks just like the green iguana we tried a few weeks ago. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna be similar in taste. So the recipe we're gonna try is actually a shredded spiny tail buffalo dip. So just like buffalo chicken dip, we're gonna try it with spiny tail. So we're gonna cook it first in the pressure cooker. So you definitely need liquid when you're cooking um, something similar to poultry, even though this is reptile. So I've got my chicken broth here, so you wanna make sure there's lots of liquid so that this is pretty much gonna be steaming and cooking all the way so that it just shreds with a fork. And I've just salt and peppered these because everything, when you do pressure cook, the seasoning is actually better before it cooked versus once you cook it and add seasoning, it, it absorbs it better. So I just salt and peppered it. So we do wanna try a little bit before we add it to the dip just to see how it is. So we're just gonna throw these in here and let it cook. And of course, if you don't have a pressure cooker, you just want to cook it as if you would cook chicken, like a stewed chicken in the crock pot. So just slow and steady. I would say at least eight hours, just to make sure it's fully cooked and then you could shred it with a fork. Alrighty, our iguana is ready. It is tender and shredding to the touch, just like we planned. And actually, let's just try a piece right now to see how it tastes. pretty darn good. I don't, I don't see anything wrong with this meat at all. That was really good. It's going to be even better in my buffalo dip though, so I'm going to go ahead and get this going. Alright, so I'm just going to keep pulling the meat off the bones and I'm going to chop it a lot finer just so it's more uniform in our dip. Okay, so our iguana is chopped. We're going to stick this in a saute pan. And we are gonna add the rest of our buffalo dip ingredients. So next thing you wanna add is a half a cup of any kind of wing sauce. So this is just Sweet Baby Ray's wing sauce. So put that in there, oh yeah. So you just wanna get that nice and warm and kinda coated here. So next is eight ounces of softened cream cheese. Add that in there. <laughs> it might take a little while to soften up. All right, so you just want to stir this until the cream cheese melts. It's already smelling so good. Love anything buffalo. Right, now that our cream cheese is pretty much softened, I've got a half a cup of ranch dressing. We're just going to add this to the mix. Looks good. Stir that in. And then we've got three quarter cup of shredded cheese. We're going to mix in here. And I'm going to save a little bit for the, to top it. Man, this is going to be good. <laughs> so just find yourself a small baking dish. Pour this in here. Pour your up. <laughs> And I'm gonna top it with the rest of the shredded cheese and a little bit of blue cheese crumbles. And then I've got the oven preheated to 350 and just bake this for about 10 minutes or until the cheese is nice and bubbly and take it out and enjoy. Here we go, 350, nice and hot. 10 minutes. All right, it's been 10 minutes. Oh man, 
It smells and looks amazing. I love cheese. <laughs> so we're gonna let this cool because I know it's gonna be hot, so more anticipation. We have to wait and be patient until it cools off and we're gonna try our spiny tail dip. What we've been waiting for. It's a big piece. <laughs> That's delicious. <laughs> so good. Tastes just like buffalo chicken dip. You'd never know it's spiny tail. You get in on some of this Mexican spiny tail dip. Gloria says it's good and I believe her. Mm. It's amazing. So we went, we saw, we conquered the Mexican spiny tail. They're very similar in taste, consistency, smell to a green iguana. There's really not much difference. If anything, I would say it's better. So anything you cook in this type of recipe is going to be good. So I'm glad Gloria and tried a piece with no, uh, you know, saturation of other flavors piled on top of it. But it's good. Nothing wrong with it. It's amazing. So glad you guys could join us. So in the comments, I want you guys to let us know how you're enjoying these episodes, what you'd like to see in the future. Uh, we want some ideas from you guys, what you'd like to see. You've, all we're doing is kind of carrying the camera around with us and showing you what we do, our lives. And um, you know, we don't cook iguana every day, but we'd rather use it than just throw it away, burn it, throw it in the trash. We want to use every component of the animal we can, and we feel like that's a sense of respect towards that animal. If we're killing it, we're going to eat it, or we're going to use it. So until next time, stay wild.